think we left off on around page 1134 in the 11th edition. Not sure where that is in the 10th. <clears throat> um, with Oedipus's judgment pronounced on the murderer. Um, lines 250 to about 268 or so is where he gives that that judgment and he concludes 260 and following <clears throat> upon the murderer I invoke this curse whether he is one man at all or none or one of many may he wear out his life in misery in misery to miserable doom if with my knowledge he lives at my hearth, I pray that I may say that I myself may feel the curse. On you I lay my charge to fulfill all this for me, for the God and for this land of ours, destroyed and blighted by the God forsaken. Now notice with that last sentence, what he's charging the chorus and kind of via the chorus all the people of Thebes with. It's your job to fulfill what I've just demanded. That is, it's not mine. It's your job to make sure that the murderer is punished in such. All right? And then he says, even were this no matter of God's ordinance, it would not fit you so to leave it lie. Even if Apollo had not demanded this, he says, it still wouldn't be right for you to just forget about it. He's kind of implying Um you should have acted before because the people haven't other than offering their prayers the people seemingly haven't done anything they haven't sought out you know Lias's killer but he says search it out since I am now since I am now a holder of this office and have his bed and wife that once was his and had his line not been unfortunate we would have common children that is I would have had children with Yocasta. He would have had children with your Laius, would have had children with Yocasta, okay? And I would raise his children as my own. All dramatic irony. He's totally clueless as to what he is saying. The audience is totally aware of what he is saying, okay? So, I fight in his defense as for my father. And that's where, you know, it's almost like if this were a sitcom done back in the 70s or 80s, done in front of a studio audience, there would be behind the actors on the stage, the big sign that says, applause, okay? Only here it would be dramatic irony. He's totally clueless because he is fighting for his father. So, the chorus says, you've held me to my oath, for as you have held me to my oath, I speak. What's the chorus say? I'm not the killer. And remember, the chorus isn't a single individual. It's a group of men. And so these group of men are saying, kind of singularly, I am not the killer. We are not the killers. But let the gods say who the killer is. It's not our job. It's the gods' job, Oedipus. 294 or so. Right. Now, sure, I agree with you. But to put compulsion on the gods against their will, how are you going to force Apollo to tell us who the murderer is? Um, okay, let me give you another idea then, the chorus says. Give me a third one if you can. Tiresias. Sin for Tiresias. Oedipus. Even in this, my actions have not been sluggard. Already done. Right? He said, on Crayon's word, I've sent two messengers. Okay? So, da, 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 da. Um, so the chorus goes on to talk about how the chorus goes on to relate the story about Lias' murder. All right? It was said, 308 or so, it was said that he was killed by certain wayfarers, plural. Oedipus, I heard that, but no one saw the killer. Of course. But if he has a share of fear at all, he, the killer, 
His courage will not stand firm hearing your curse. Once the murderer or murderers hear how you have cursed, pronounce judgment on the murderer slash murderers, what does that mean? His courage will not stand firm. Okay, but, but what form will that cowering take? I mean, are they literally going to... No, I think what the chorus is suggesting is they're going to make a mistake. You know, what, what cops and investigators will say is everyone who pulls off a crime and it's hidden for a while, you just keep an eye on them long enough and they will do something. The old phrase goes back at least a thousand years, is murder will out. The murderer will do something to reveal him or herself. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Okay, But it's an old idea. Yes? So in this case, when you say courage, is that, is that synonymous with like competency? Yeah, I think so. Or to... The ability to maintain the charade of innocence. And it's in a sense that's courage, that's acting, you know, um, acting out in a way that does, that does not betray one's guilt. Okay? So, Tiresias comes in, led by a little boy. Why? Because he's blind. So he's blind, and so again, as I had on the other day, um, you've got this theme, and this theme, okay, in the play, and as well as others, you know, fate versus free will that I've already talked about. So look at how Oedipus addresses them. Tiresias, you are versed in everything. Versed there means competent. You know well how to do everything. Okay? Things teachable, things not to be spoken, things of the heaven, earth creeping things, in other words, things out there, okay, as well as things down here. Now, things down here refers to interaction of people, you know, science, mathematics, physical kind of stuff, right? Things up there, things of the heavens, things to do with the gods, things to do with fate, things to do with chance or fortune. He says, you know it all, right? You have no eyes, but in your mind, you know with what a plague our city is afflicted. So in your mind kind of implies, use another kind of old phrase, in your mind's eye. So he lacks physical sight, but he has intellectual sight, we can say. My Lord, in you alone we find a champion, in you alone one that can rescue us. Why in him alone? Did Tiresias solve the riddle of the Sphinx? No, he didn't. He probably didn't try, otherwise he wouldn't be alive still. Okay. Huh. So in you alone, we have a champion. Perhaps you have not heard the messengers, Phoebus sent, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, he says, 330, do not begrudge us oracles from birds. And you got a little footnote about, you know, tracking how they fly and stuff. Or any other way of prophecy within your skill. Pull out all the stops. Use every means you know of figuring out who this killer is. Save yourself and the city save me. So, if you find out who the murderer is, he says, you'll be saving yourself. Why? Because eventually this plague that is on the city, it's going to touch who? Everyone. Okay? So if you solve this, you'll be saving yourself, you'll be saving the city, you'll be saving me. Redeem the debt of our pollution that lies on us because of this dead man. Tiresias. 
Alas, how terrible is wisdom when it brings no profit to the man that's wise. This I knew well, but had forgotten it. Else I would not have come here. What kind of response is that to what Oedipus has just said? It's kind of like the response Crayon brought when he first spoke after going to the oracle. Go back for just a second. And Crayon says, in response to, what word do you bring us from the God? A good word. For things hard to bear themselves, if in the final issue all is well, I can't complete good fortune. Whoosh. Completely goes over Oedipus' head. What do you mean? Okay. Tiresias responds with a similar kind of riddle. Oedipus, what? How sad you are, now you have come. Okay, go back to Tiresias' first two lines. How terrible is wisdom when it brings no profit to the man that's wise. Now, does he mean profit in this sense, money? No, because what else, how else can you profit from something? Louder? You can get a benefit. You can learn from it. You can become better because of it. Okay. But Oedipus is going to kind of latch on that word, prophet. Tiresias, let me go home. It will be easiest for us both to bear our several destinies to the end if you will follow my advice. Okay. I, want, I just want to go home. It'll be good for me. It'll be good for you. We have to follow our destinies. You'd rob us of this. Notice the language. When you rob someone, you steal from them. You take their wealth. You take something that belongs to them. You'd rob us of this, your gift of prophecy. You talk as one who had no care for law, nor love for thieves who reared, reared you. Why don't you want to help us? Come on, it's in your power. It's in your ability. Yes, but I see that even your own words miss the mark. That phrase, miss the mark, that is a literal translation of the word hamartia that is in the introduction to the Sophocles section. Right? This word in the Greek New Testament, okay, so Greek, New Testament, this is the word get, that gets translated into English as sin. Missing the mark. It's, a, um, it's an archery metaphor. The mark is the target. Right? So when you quote unquote sin, what are you doing? You're not hitting the mark. You're not on target. You're screwing up, in other words. Okay? So go back and look at what he says. I see that even your own words miss the mark. That is, focus, Oedipus. Get better aim. Therefore, I must fear for mine. Why does he say his words miss the mark? What language does Oedipus kind of use or bring in? You will rob us? He's like, no, 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 no. You're not getting it. Therefore, okay, he says, I must fear for mine. My what? My words. If you can't understand the words I'm using, I should just leave. Huh. For God's sake, if you know of anything, do not turn from us. All of us kneel to you. I, the king, he says, bow down before you. All of us here, your suppliants. Come on, you can solve this problem. All of you here know nothing. Now that's kind of an arrogant statement. I mean, literally nothing? What could Oedipus say at this point? 
uh, Sphinx, gone, me. I know something at least, you know. All of you here know nothing. I will not bring to the light of day my troubles. Mine. So where are his troubles? They're now in darkness. Why? Because he's keeping them inside. Rather than call them yours. What are his troubles? If you've read to the end of the poem, uh, play, and not even read to the end of the play, read to the next about four pages. What are his troubles? What does he know? Yeah. Keep going. Give it away. I've already gave it away last week. And Oedipus is the murderer. Why are those his troubles? Why are those Tiresias' troubles? Keep going. Um, he knows something, but it's not going to be his difference. Yeah, what is going to be his profit to reveal that truth? I mean, I'm trying to think of a political situation that applies. Can't really. It may, no, I won't go there. Uh, no, too much going. Um, so, what do you mean? You know of something but refuse to speak? You know, but you're keeping it hidden. Would you be... Now look at his language. Again, he is missing the mark. Would you betray us, he says, and destroy the city? I will not bring this pain upon us both, neither on you nor on myself. What's Tiresias trying to do? He's trying to protect Oedipus. He's also trying to protect himself. Notice, because if he brings the pain to Oedipus, what's Oedipus going to do to him? Kill him or bring the pain to him. Okay. Because bear in mind, is death really the worst thing? I mean, think of the pain that could be inflicted over a long period of time. Uh, a lot of people would say, just kill me now. No, 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 that's too easy, okay? So, why is it you question me and waste your labor? That is, what you are attempting is a waste of time. I will tell you nothing. You would provoke a stone. Tell us, you villain, tell us, you villain. You lawbreaker. And do not stand there quietly and move, balking at the issue. You blame my temper, but you do not see your own that lived within you. Your own what? Your own temper? It is me you judge. Who wouldn't get angry <laughs> at the words you use, Oedipus asks? Tiresias. Of them fell excuse me, of themselves, things will come. Now that's a weird statement. Of themselves, things will come. <clears throat> What's the themselves? Things. What does he mean? Eventually you're going to figure it out. Keep going. You're like 95% of the way there. Why will he figure it out? Because you can't escape that. That's what, of themselves, things will come. In other words, it's all just kind of falling into place. Oedipus, well, since they will come, tell them to me. I will say nothing further. And against this answer, let your temper rage as wildly as you will. Okay? So what does Oedipus then say? Notice Oedipus is kind of slowly betraying his character. All right. I am so angry I shall not hold back a jot of what I think. For I would have you know, I think you were complotter of the deed. You were a conspirator. 
You were involved in the murder. What has Oedipus just done? How? Why? He's jumped or leaped to a crazy conclusion. What evidence is there to lead to that conclusion? None. None. If, the, if, if Oedipus were a prosecutor, the defense attorney would just say, evidence, case closed, <laughs> you know, because there isn't any. Endure of the deed, save in so far as for the actual killing. Why is Tiresias, according to Oedipus thought, not the actual killer? Because he kind of couldn't see lions. He'd have to be, you know, swinging wildly with a sword or something. Had you had eyes, I would have said you alone murdered. Really? That's what the yes means. Really? Then I warn you faithfully to keep the letter and, and notice how Tiresias responds. What are we getting? Tit for tat escalation. Notice Tiresias, he keeps it bottled up until Oedipus accuses him of being involved in the murder. And then that bottle stopper is gone. He's just going to let it out. He lets it out slowly, kind of. Look at how he replies. Then I warn you faithfully to keep the letter of your proclamation, and from this day forth you speak no word of greeting to these nor me. Colon. Could he have stopped there? What was his proclamation? Let the murderer or murderers not be welcome in any house, not speak to anybody, not be you know, greeted by anyone. So an astute observer would hear that and go, let's see, Oedipus said, and Tiresias just said. See, that's not a jump to conclusion. That's reasoning, right? And then he says, you are the land's pollution. That makes it pretty clear. Does it make it crystal clear? Does he say, you are the murderer of Laius? No. How shamelessly he started up this talk. You started up. How did he start up this, this taunt, this taunting? By saying how terrible is wisdom when it brings no profit to the man that lies? Kind of unclear. How do you think you will escape? Tiresias, I have. I have escaped. The truth is what I cherish, and that's my strength. In other words, he's kind of saying, you can't touch me because I only speak the truth. Again, what I said on Friday, Tiresias' character in Greek literature is, he's a blind seer, he's a blind prophet, and he has never been wrong in any of the stories about him. He always foretells something or foretells, because bear in mind, a prophet talks both about the future and the present truth. A prophet is a forth teller, one who tells forth, as well as a foreteller, one who tells the future. Right? Who taught you the truth? not your profession. How do you know the truth? So why does he bring in his profession? What is meant by profession? What do you want to do when you leave MTSU? What are your career choices? Those are your professions. The jobs you do. Notice what he's saying about Tiresias. Unless you're going to work for a nonprofit, okay, how is your profession going to keep you alive? <clears throat> it's going to make you money, right? So you can buy food, and housing, and clothing, and all that kind of stuff. He is saying, you're kind of a truth teller to the highest bidder. In other words, if someone pays you 20 bucks, you'll tell them one kind of truth. But if somebody else pays you 50 bucks, you'll tell another kind of truth. All right? You have taught me. 
for you have made me speak against my will. That is, you are my teacher because you've taught me to speak when I shouldn't speak. And my will was to do what? What did Tiresias want to do? Go back home. Just, let's just, just keep it quiet. You live your life. I'll live my life. I'll keep the secrets I know. They'll never be said. Speak what? Why did I make you speak? Tell me again. Did you not understand before, or would you provoke me into speaking? No, no, no. I didn't understand. Say it again. Okay. And he says, line 395, I say you are the murderer of the king whose murderer you seek. That's pretty clear. Now, what should Oedipus do at that point? Okay. Possibly, if he was going to follow the letter of the law, and he accepted at face value what Tiresias said. What else could he do? Have a conversation about how. Okay. A conversation with Tiresias? Or a conversation with himself? What do I mean by a conversation with himself? What could Oedipus do at that point? Let's say Oedipus is innocent. What could he say? I have never killed a man in my life. But if he's honest, at this point he could go, you know, I did kill that one guy. A long time ago. But yeah, I, I did kill one guy. Hmm. Oedipus. You're the murderer you see. Not twice you shall say calumnies like this and stay in punishment. He goes, oh, you want more? I mean, if I'm going to be punished, Tiresias is kind of implied. If you're going to punish me, if you're going to inflict pain on me, then I'm really going to deserve it. Okay. Go ahead. I say that with those you love best, you live in foul shame unconsciously and do not see where you are in calamity. Okay. He said, your lies is murder. What has he not said? I mean, he's, he's implied it in this last speech, but he hasn't come out clearly and said it. Elias, Elias is also your father. Which follows some little bit of reasoning would say that the queen is your mother. Unless, of course, Elias had another wife before Yocasta. Right? Possibility. But he doesn't go that far yet. So you live in foul shame unconsciously. You didn't know. You know, every now and then, a story hits the, the news about, you know, two people fall in love, get married, and 20 years later, they find out, because they were each adopted, they find out, you were actually brother and sister. It's been like, I don't know, four or five cases that I can think of in the last 10 or 20 years. Right? So, does that mean they've committed, quote unquote, incest? Well, in one sense, yes, but in another sense, no. Why? Because they were totally unaware. Does that mean the state, depending on the state, should arrest them for incest? Yes or no? Well, I mean, according to the strict letter, right? So it was unconscious, Tiresias says. Oedipus, you think you can get away with this? Because notice what Oedipus is kind of suggesting. You just maligned my wife and my children. Huh. Yes, if the truth has anything of strength. That is, if there is any strength in truth, like... Okay, gods, some of you are supposed to be gods of truth, Alethea. If there's any power in truth, you know, you should support me. Oedipus, it does. Truth does have strength, but not for you. It has no strength for you. Why? Because you are blind in mind, in ears, as well as in your eyes. 
A little bit of ad hominem attack there. So when somebody, you know, you're in an argument with somebody, you're having an intellectual argument, and somebody says, oh yeah, well you're stupid because you have blue eyes. You know, that's irrelevant to the point. That's <coughs> non sequitur. That's kind of what Oedipus is doing. Because you're blind in your eyes, he says, you're also blind in your mind, you can't see, and you're blind in your ears. Hmm. Tiresias. You are a poor wretch to taunt me with the very insult which everyone soon will heap upon yourself. Again, that is foretelling. He knows what's going to happen. People are going to call you blind. And he doesn't mean only metaphorically blind. All right? Your life is one long night so that you cannot hurt me or any other who sees the light. He's blind. All he sees is darkness. That's why it's one long night. Tiresias, it is not fate that I should be your ruin. Apollo is enough. That is, I'm not the one to bring your downfall. No, no, no. That's the God. It is his care to work this out. Work this out means kind of move the pieces around because fate has ordained. Bear in mind, as I had up here on the board the other day, the gods don't make fate happen, and fate doesn't make the gods do things. But the gods know what fate will do. Okay, So at times they do kind of push people into the right positions. Okay, So, What does Oedipus do next? So he's accused Crayon, excuse me, he's accused Tiresias. Now he says, was this your own design or Crayon's? Crayon's no hurt to you. Why does he accuse Crayon? Because Crayon's the one who brought the word from Apollo? Because it doesn't make any sense. This is another leap to or jump to a conclusion. What is Oedipus showing us about his character? We saw it when Crayon first arrived with the word from the God. And he said, you know, we can go inside and talk, or I can, you know, reveal it out here in front of everybody. And what does Oedipus say? No, no, out here, I have nothing to hide. What kind of judgment is that? Or was that? <coughs> Rash, impetuous, spur of the moment. He doesn't think things through. Rashness is a sin. Why? Because you miss the mark when you act without thinking or speak without thinking. It's usually when one does that, that a few minutes later one goes, shouldn't have said that. Should have kept it to myself. Oedipus. Wealth, sovereignty, skill, outmatching skill for the contrivance of an envied life. Okay? And so what does he go on to say in that long speech on page 1138 from roughly 420 to just before the chorus? He goes on and kind of lays out why he thinks Crayon is involved. Great store of jealousy. Fill your treasury chest if my friend Crayon friend from the first and loyal, thus secretly attends me, secretly desires to drive me out, and secretly suborns this juggling, trick-devising quack. So Tiresias, who when Oedipus first mentioned him was like, who always tells the truth and is never wrong, etc., now is a quack. He's a charlatan, okay? This wily beggar who has only eyes for his own gains. You know, he did mention profit, but blindness in his skill. So what's he saying about Crayon? Crayon wants my job. Tell me, where have you seen clear, Tiresias, with your prophetic eyes? When the dark singer, and here he has a point, why didn't you see clearly when the, root, when the Sphinx was out there? Did you speak word of deliverance to its citizens? And yet the riddle's answer was not the province of a chance comer. It was a prophet's task, and plainly, you had no gift of prophecy. Okay. 
from your understanding, can a prophet, you know, prophesy about everything? No. It's only when the God, or God, inspires. Go back to the Old Testament, read the prophets, and not everything the prophet says is, thus saith the Lord. It's only the parts that begin, thus saith the Lord. I mean, if a prophet's in a room with somebody else and says, I've got to use the latrine, that's not God speaking. That's, you know, his gut speaking kind of a thing. But when he's talking about the future of the kingdom, something like that, he begins with the other phrase. So, but I came, Oedipus, who knew nothing, and I stopped her. I solved the riddle. I didn't get my knowledge from birds, he says. So, chorus. Keep in mind, chorus comments on the action and words that have gone before. We look at this man's words and yours, my king, and we find both have spoken them in anger. What does the chorus mean? Think of the chorus. Here's an example, <coughs> political example I'll use. Think of the chorus as the White House communications team. And a president goes out and says something. Biden did it yesterday. And then the White House communications team has to come out afterwards and say, he didn't mean that. Biden said, for example, um, the United States would militarily come to Taiwan's defense if China were to invade. I mean, he was asked point blank. So we would send troops. And he said, yes, that's always been part of the plan. No, that has never publicly been stated. The United States has always followed what's called strategic ambiguity, where we kind of warn China, you don't really know what's going to happen, but put two and two and leave the question mark, okay? And Biden twice now, in May of this year and just yesterday, came out and said, okay, both times the communications team said, there is no change from official U.S. policy, all right? N notice what the chorus is doing here. Why is it similar to what I just said? The chorus says, you both spoke in anger. Shh, 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 shh. calm down, calm down. Because when people speak of, out of anger, what do they tend to do? They say a little bit more than they implied or than they wanted to, okay? We need no angry words, but only thought how we may best hit the God's meaning for us. In other words, how we can hit the mark of the God's meaning. The chorus is saying, you're, I'm going to make a verb out of this. You're both hamartia ink. <laughs> you're both missing the mark. You're both sinning. You're not getting to the point. The only problem is the chorus doesn't know, because of dramatic irony, that Tiresias is hitting the mark to bullseye. Every time. Tiresias, if you are king, at least I have the right, no less, to speak in my defense against you. That is, I have a right to self-defense. Verbally, he's talking about. Of that much, I am master. Okay, He says, I'm no slave, but Loxus is the god, another name for the god. And so I shall not enroll myself with cram or my patron. Since you have taunted me with being blind, here is my word for you. In other words, you did the tip, now I'm giving the tap. All right, I'm going to respond in kind. You have your eyes, but see not where you are in sin. Sight versus blindness. You have your sight, but man, you are blind as a bat. You don't see diddly. Nor where you live, nor whom you live with. What does he mean by see? We use it all the time in this sense. Someone says something new, I see. What does that mean? I understand. I perceive. It means I see with the mind, not with these things, not with the eyes. Okay? Do you know who your parents are? There's a non sequitur. What? Non sequitur means it does not follow. Okay? Parent, why are you bringing up my parents? What does that have to do with 
the God in Elias' death. Do you know who your parents are? Unknowing, you are an enemy to kith and kin in death, beneath the earth and in this life. That is, you're an enemy to your kin beneath the earth, already dead, as well as in this life. Now, as far as Oedipus knows, how are his parents? They're alive and well. They're kicking on along, just doing great. Tiresias has just implied one of your parents is dead, or one of your family members is dead. A deadly-footed, double-striking curse. Deadly-footed, that's kind of a pun on Oedipus's name, which means clubfoot. Okay? Double-striking curse from father and mother both shall drive you forth out of this land. Your father and your mother both will curse you or have cursed you with darkness on your eyes that now have such straight vision. Shall there be a place, shall there be a place will not be harbored to your cries, a corner of Kitharon, mountain in Greece, uh, will not ring an echo to your cries soon, soon, when you shall learn the secret of your marriage, which street, which steered you to a haven in this house, haven, no haven, after a lucky voyage, and of the multitude of other evils, establishing a grim equality between you and your children, you know nothing. Kind of riddling. He doesn't come right out and say exactly what he means. Oedipus. Is it endurable that I should hear such words from him? Go, and the curse go with you. Get him out of here. Okay? Terry says, I wouldn't have come, but you called me. And when he says called, he doesn't mean, you know, you kind of suggested I come. It was a command. I did not know you would talk like a fool, or it would have been long before I called you. I am a fool then? As it seems to you, but to the parents who have bred you wise. I was wise to your parents. What, what parents? Who? This day will show your birth and will destroy you. How needlessly your riddles darken everything, right? Riddles are not like a parable, per se. A parable is a story that is meant to convey a message. Riddles don't. Riddles are nothing but verbal games, and you've got to figure out how the game works, okay? Tiresias, yeah, but it's a riddle answering your strongest, right? I mean, you solved the riddle of the Sphinx. That was nothing compared to this riddle. Taunt me where you will find me great. It is the very luck that has destroyed you. I don't care. If it has saved this city, well, I'm going to go, okay? So, Oedipus says, once you go, you will not trouble me again. Another, he's implying, if I see you again, you're dead. Teresa's, okay. I've said what I came here to say, not fearing your countenance. There is no way you can hurt me. Why does he say that? Who does Teresa suggest is on his side? Or who's the muscle behind him? The gods. He's got Apollo on his side, okay? I tell you, king, this man... This murderer, whom you have long declared you are in search of, indicting him in threatening proclamation of murder of Lias, he is here. In name, he is a stranger among citizens, but soon he will be shown to be a citizen, true native Theban. That is, he will be a born Theban, rather than someone who came and got you know, naturalized citizenship. And he'll have no joy of the discovery. Blindness for sight and beggary for riches, his exchange. He shall go journeying to a foreign country, tapping his way before him with a stick. He shall be proved father and brother both to his own children and his house, to her that gave him birth, a son and husband both, a fellow sower in his father's bed, with that same father that he murdered. Go inside, reckon that out, that is, figure out that riddle, and if you find me mistaken, say I have no skill in prophecy. That, that last line, 
If you find that I'm wrong, say that I have no skill in prophecy, that's almost an invitation. And if I'm proven wrong, kill me. I mean, he's, he's laying down his marker there. He's saying, I'll bet my life on this. Tiresias goes off stage, Oedipus goes in the palace. And the chorus walks from one side to the other. Who is the man proclaimed by Delphi's prophetic rock as the bloody-handed murderer, the doer of deeds that none dare name? What's the guy's name? Okay, now, what did Tiresias already say? Point blank. You are the murderer whom you seek. Okay? So they walk back and forth, saying their lines. Crayon comes in. Page 1141, line 566. And why is Crayon there? He wants to clear his name. He's heard that he's been accused of murder or conspiracy. And he says, 571, I do not want to live on with the burden of such a scandal on me. The report injures me doubly, most violently, for I'll be called a traitor to my city and traitor also to my friends and you. Yeah, well, maybe he didn't mean it. Maybe he's just, you know, blowing off steam. Why? Because he's rash. Graham, but did he actually say? Mm, yeah, he did. 580. But why, I do not know. Notice what the chorus is trying to do. Yes, he did say that, but I don't know why. What's the, but I don't know why I mean. Okay, what else? They're getting at the intention or the motivation of Oedipus. The, but I don't know why implies what about it? He didn't mean it. They're trying to give Oedipus, you know, um, what's the phrase? I just had it. Benefit of the doubt, okay? He didn't mean it. Again, he was just blowing off steam. Were his eyes straight in his head? That is, did he look normal? His eyes straight versus his eyes rolling in his head like, a, like somebody's crazy, okay? Um, was his mind right when he accused me in this fashion? I don't know. You know, I, I don't see what princes do. Notice what the chorus does not want to say or what position the chorus does not want to take. It doesn't want to get between Oedipus and Creon, just like it didn't want to get between Oedipus and Tiresias. Why not? Because the chorus comes across as your prototypical or as your essential um, yes man. Whoever's speaking in power, yes sir, good idea. Somebody else counters that idea, well that's a good idea too, I think we ought to consider that. Even though these two ideas are opposing one another. The course is trying to survive between powerful forces. Okay? So Oedipus comes out. What are you doing here? He asks. For God's sake, 590, tell me what you saw in me, what cowardice or what stupidity that made you lay a plot like this against me. Again, he's just taking that jumping to conclusion and, and building conclusion upon conclusion. Did you imagine I should not observe this crafty scheme? Etc. Crayon, 601. Do you know what you're doing? That is, do you even have an idea, an inkling of what it is you're really saying? Will you listen to words to answer yours and then pass judgment? You're quick to speak, but I'm slow to grasp you, for I have found you dangerous and my foe. Okay, stop. First of all, hear what I have to say. And would you just shut up and listen for a moment? Okay. Don't tell me that you're not guilty. What do you think Crayon wants to do at that point? Smack him. Would you shut up for a minute? If you think obstinacy without wisdom a valuable possession, you are wrong. 
obstinacy without wisdom. Now, he is kind of suggesting obstinacy with wisdom is a valuable possession. That is, if you know you are right, then wisdom would say, stand firm. But if you're not right, and you stand firm, you become who that we've already read about? Abner Snopes, right? The fierce conviction of the rightness of his own actions, burning out other people's you know, property. And a uh, crayon, tell me of the offense that I'm guilty of. Did you or did you not urge me to send to this prophetic mumbler? Did you advise me to send for Tiresias? Yeah, and I, I still hold by that. How long ago is it since? What do you want to, why Elias? I don't understand. Vanished, died, was murdered. Uh, long, long time. Was Tiresias a prophet then? Yes. As honored then as he is today. Uh, did he ever say a word about me then? No. You never made a search for the dead man. We searched, couldn't find anything. Why did our wise old friend not say this then? I don't know. And when I know nothing, I hold my tongue. Smack. I mean, there's a put down. So when you don't know something, shut up, Oedipus. You know this much I can do and can declare this much if you're loyal. What? What do you want to know? He would not have said that I killed Laius had he not met you first. You know yourself whether he said this. That is, you know whether he said that. Does Crayon know whether Tiresias said that? No, because he wasn't there. Okay. Oedipus, I'll not be proved a murderer. Fine. Cool. That's what well then means. You're married to my sister. Uh, yeah. You rule this country, right? You give her an equal share of the government? Yeah. And I'm third, right? And it am rated as equal. Yes, yes. Okay, now pause for a moment. He says, think about this. Put yourself in my shoes. You rule. She kind of co-rules. I am third, but I have same authority and power as you do. But what does Crayon not have? Or let me rephrase it. What does Crayon not have to do? He doesn't have to deal with the daily problems of running the country. Use our system of government. He would be like somebody who gets to use Air Force One whenever he wants, who gets all the perks of the presidency and none of the headaches of having to deal with Congress or the people or the press, but just gets all the benefits. He's like, why would I want to change my position for your position? You're the one who has to deal with the gods. Okay? That's what that big, long speech is all about. Of course, his words are wise, King. Line 680, 681. If one fears to fall, those who are quick of temper are not safe. If you are quick of temper, if you are short-fused, you will fall. Oedipus. When he that plots against me secretly moves quickly, I must quickly counterplot. Cran, okay, then what do you want to do? You want to banish me? No, I want to kill you. Uh, I do not think you have your wits about you. That's a nice way of saying what? You're nuts. You're nuts, man. Yeah, you're crazy. Okay, so they go back and forth. Oedipus, I must be ruler. Crayon, very bottom of that page, 1143, not if you rule badly. Oh, city, city. What does Crayon mean? Does he mean if you're a bad king, the people should rise up against you and overthrow you? The new king in England, King Charles III, 
probably should have chosen, I think I said it in this class, probably should have chosen another name. Why? Because Charles I was beheaded by Parliament. Charles II was essentially, well, he died, but his son was overthrown. Okay? By Parliament, again, they invited a new king and queen in. Um, College of Virginia. William and Mary. William and Mary were invited to be king and queen from the Netherlands. Crayon, I have some share in the city. It's not yours alone. Okay. Corey, stop, stop, stop. Why? Your Costco's coming out. You guys shouldn't be fighting. She's your sister, your wife. You should stop. Okay, we will stop there. Uh, we need to finish Oedipus. Well, yeah, we need probably need to finish Oedipus on Monday. That's what I've got for the syllabus. Um, finish reading it if you haven't read it. Um, I'll go, up and go ahead and put up a quiz over the introduction to Greek drama, the little stuff, um, and then the study of Sophocles, the introduction to Sophocles, and Oedipus. Um, I'll, today is today. I'll put that up today. Today is Monday. Today is Monday, right? Man, my brain is so fried. I'll put it up today in. Sorry, I so, said uh, Wednesday. We have another day for it. And have it due Friday. So you'll have several days. All right. Have a good day. I did not take roll if anybody came in. <laughs>